Well, folks, we're here to review yet another piece of seminal cultural content, something so important the world has stopped spinning on its axis. We are reviewing Taylor Swift's new album, The Tortured Poets Department. Now, listen, I know what you're all thinking. You're all thinking that I'm going to destroy Taylor Swift's new album the same way that I destroyed the Barbie movie. Remember, we set that one on fire. We're not going to do that anymore. We've outgrown such pure out antics. Maybe not. Now, whenever I make a video like this, people ask, why didn't you even bother with this? Okay, first of all, signal cultural event. When an album drops and on the first day of release sells 1.4 million traditional albums and the 31 songs, 31 songs, on this album generate 243.4 million on-demand audio streams in the United States on that day. When that happens, that is a signal cultural event and it requires comment. Two, I don't like being told that The Shape of Water is a good movie by all the critics. It's not. It's a piece of crap. I don't like being gaslit. And I don't like when all the critics pretend that Taylor Swift's new album is anything but absolutely mediocre baseline, baseline yuck. It's just, it's nothing. It's just a big nothing. I, I can't even say that it's complete, like, trash because I'm not even sure that it rises to the level of trash. It's just, it's, it's elevator music. This could be playing in your ear and you wouldn't even notice it was playing in your ear until two hours later when it stopped playing in your ear. One of the things that's happened with Taylor Swift over the course of her career, because she was 17 and now she's 34, the only way that you can tell the difference between her songs at 17 and her songs at 34, when she's double the age, is the lyrics were better when she was 17, and also that she curses more. So here we have a chart of swear words in Taylor Swift albums. And as you can see, she's a very mature adult woman now. We know because she says F That's how we know, because she says the F word. She says it a lot. Now, again, I'm looking forward to the album she cuts after she eventually marries someone. Like, say, Travis Kelsey and has kids. Like, her songs about having kids would be actually kind of interesting. Something new happening in her life, other than this perennial teenage angsty nonsense. Like, that would be interesting. That's why I, for one, have been a fan of the Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift thing, because I hope that she gets married. And then all of these, I'm a bad 31-year-old feminists who say the marriage is tripe, suddenly go, oh my God, if Taylor's doing it, maybe I should do it too. And we get the Taylor Swift baby boom. Like, I'm very into that. Now, I will grant you from the beginning, I am no fan of Taylor Swift. I don't listen to her albums. I've heard some of her songs because I go to the gym and they play some of her songs on the loudspeaker at the gym. It's my great irritation. I'll give her credit for having written some catchy hooks in the past. This album, which is titled humbly, The Tortured Poets Department, which it, because she is, she's a tortured poet. First of all, my number one thought upon hearing about The Tortured Poets Department is where is this department where they torture poets and how do I apply to join? And after listening through this album, all I can say is my determination to join the department where they torture pseudo poets has never been greater because I have been tortured. And in retaliation, I will join the tortured poets department. This album is 31 songs long. Dante's Inferno is 34 cantos. The Bible is separated in the Old Testament into 54 different segments. This album is 31 songs. The runtime on this album is over two hours. Here are things that are shorter than Taylor Swift's new album. The Sgt. Pepper album from the Beatles, which runs 39 minutes. And you can play it three times over and still be within her runtime. Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, which is 70 minutes long. Citizen Kane, the entire film, is an hour 59. This thing is two hours of unmitigated angsty garbage. It's just terrible. And there's not even a course anywhere in there. So overall thoughts. Without autotune, this lady would be absolutely sunk because her range is significantly less than my own. And I have basically laryngitis right now. <coughs> the entire range of this album is about one octave, maybe, at a max. Many of these songs are ranged within a sixth the tempo of each of these songs, virtually all of them, is mid-tempo, between like 80 and 120 beats per minute. Okay? So they're, they're all the same song. It's one long song. There are maybe four or five songs out of the 31 that have any sort of distinctive rhythm or distinctive melody. But the rest of them could be played on a loop. You could play the second song on this album on a loop, and it would be the entire album. 
It's awful. So now to the actual content of the songs. As I say, I'm not going to stop saying this. There are 31 songs. She doesn't lead an interesting enough life for her to have 31 songs on her album. She's not Pustian in her prose. She doesn't get to do the Thomas Pynchon 800-page book involving every detail. She's not James Joyce in Ulysses. She's not an interesting writer, and nothing interesting happens in her life other than she knows celebrities. So all these people who are now going around attempting to deconstruct every element of her pseudo-poetry to look for the Easter eggs. Ooh, 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 Easter egg. Did you know that she's mentioning Kim Kardashian when the title of the song has capitalized in it K, I, and M? Mind blown. She, she does not lead an interesting life. She is a spoiled pop star who is currently 34 years old. The reason her age matters is because this album makes sense if you are 17 years old. This album makes zero sense if you are 34 years old. Let me give you a contrast between women. Taylor Swift is 34 years old, and she records three types of songs on this album, and this is true for pretty much all of her albums. All of her songs come in one of three flavors. Flavor one, I am so in love. It's the greatest love I have ever loved and anyone has ever loved. In fact, if you stack up all of the history of love next to this love that I have right now, it would all come up short. It's just like a dream. That's song number one. Song number two, I can't believe he broke up with me. What? Uh, I can't believe it. It's so terrible. What did I do? What did he do? Maybe it was me, but probably not. Probably it was mostly him, but he's so terrible. And now my heart is broken, more broken than anyone's heart has ever been broken. I put the ah in angst. There, there's never been angst like the angst I'm currently experiencing. And then there's three. I am a bad and because I'm a bad ain't nobody can take me on. I can take down all my opponents. I don't even need you. I don't even like you. You're a jerk and I can do whatever I want. And then you just repeat the cycle. Okay, so today, we're going to do this thing. We're going to go through this entire album. I'm not going to play the entire album because, again, that would take two hours. But we are going to go through every song on this album to my everlasting annoyance and shame. And we are going to evaluate each song on its own merits as to whether it is a heartbreaking work of genius by a tortured poet or whether it's just some crap she scribbled in her notebook while she was traveling for the Eras tour, raking in those dollars. We'll get to more on this in a moment, like a lot more on this in a moment. First, going online without ExpressVPN, it's like using your smartphone without the protective case. Most of the time, you're probably fine. All it takes is one accidental drop on a solid concrete, and then you wish that you had protected yourself. Every time you connect to an unencrypted network in cafes, hotels, or airports, your online data is not secure. Any hacker on the same network can gain access to and steal your personal data. Doesn't take much technical knowledge to hack somebody. All you need is some cheap hardware. Hackers can make up to $1,000 per person selling that personal information on the dark web. So I use ExpressVPN. I love it because they create a secure encrypted tunnel between my device and the internet so hackers can't steal my sensitive data. I really love how ExpressVPN is really easy to use. All you need to do is fire up the app, click one button, now you're protected. Plus, it works on all devices, phones, laptops, tablets, and more, so you can stay secure on the go. Secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash Ben Shapiro Show. EXPRESSVPN.com slash Ben Shapiro Show. You can get an extra three months for free. That's expressvpn.com slash Ben Shapiro Show. Again, expressvpn.com slash Ben Shapiro Show. So we begin with the first song, Fortnite, featuring Post Malone. Now, the one theme of this particular album is the only songs that are even sort of half listenable are the songs featuring other people. So the two best songs on the album, if you can call them the best songs on the album, are the first song, Fortnite, and Florida, triple exclamation point, featuring Florence and the Machine. Mainly because Post Malone, who did Fortnite with her, is a talented person, and so is Florence and the Machine. In any case, here is a little bit of Fortnite. I was a function. Okay, that, that, the lyric doesn't even make any sense. I'm confused by that lyric. What does that even mean? I was a functioning alcoholic till nobody noticed my new aesthetic. Just because you use the word aesthetic doesn't mean that you know what the word aesthetic means, clearly. All of this to say, I hope you're okay, but you're the reason. Man, she's taking a pill now. Okay, so, wow. Dramatic footage. Oh, she's being unchained. Wow. Because she was chained. And for a fortnight, there we were. Okay, believe it or not, this is the chorus right here. Does that sound like a chorus to you? It doesn't sound like a chorus to you, right? Because it's not a chorus. Okay, so let me explain. At the beginning of this song, she starts off doing this. Da, na, 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 na. Again, huge range. When she hits the chorus, you expect it to be something like Miley Cyrus. Right? Miley Cyrus would belt now. Now she would elevate into a different range and she would start belting. But Taylor Swift does not have a different range. And so she just stays there for the whole song. And the song runs 
three minutes and 48 seconds of this and nothing happens. I kept waiting for like there to be a, a, a chorus and it's the, nothing. But OK, here's the actual lyrics of the chorus. For a fortnight there, we were forever. All right, this is this again. This falls into the category. Oh, my God, I can't believe we broke up. I thought we were going to be forever. And now we're not forever. And now I'm falling apart. Oh, my God. Ah. Stop whining. Run into you sometimes. Ask about the weather. Now you're in my backyard. Turned into good neighbors. Your wife watered flowers. I want to kill her. So he got married and you're still bitter is what I'm getting from this. And you're 34. This, by the way, is one of the running themes of the album, which is that Taylor Swift turned... Well, here's the thing. There's a point in a woman's life where being angsty turns from being just normal and 17 into being Glenn Close and Fatal Attraction Boiling Rabbits. And you're in my backyard and you're married now and I want to kill your wife. Why don't you move on, lady? Clearly you have with many dudes in the course of your long, fruitful dating relationship period. Okay, so that was Fortnite. I can't take it anymore. That's one of the better songs on the album. That's one of the best. Okay, so let's move on to the Tortured Poets Department. This song is so amazing. She named the entire album after it. And uh, apparently we're supposed to believe that this is a good, that this is actually like a, a good piece of writing because it is about what, Matt Healy? Many of these tracks are about one or another dude that she's dated. And some people are fascinated by all this. I don't know why I should be interested in the dudes that she's dated. You'll be viral. You no, know, as people have said bef uh, about pregnancy. They say nobody wants, to, nobody wants to hear about the labor pains. They just want to see the baby. I don't want to hear about her dating history. When you get married to Travis Kelsey, give us a call. We'll, we'll pay attention. But like, I've been informed by reliable sources that there's a human named Matt Healy and that she dated him for a relatively short period of time. Okay. No, no, no. They're on and off for 10 years. <laughs> yeah, but they're on. Okay, so I've been, I've been I, breaking news. They were on and off for 10 years. So first of all, let me just explain something to all of the all of the teenagers and people who watch this sort of stuff about on and off relationships. Don't do it. It's stupid. Once you break up, move on with your life and find somebody else. If you're on and off with somebody, it should be off, not on. That's the way that works. Anyway, a little bit of life advice there. But then you can have you can be written about in a Taylor Swift song, which I guess is, is great. And uh, she references Dylan Thomas, who's a poet, which means that she's a poet, that she knows who Dylan Thomas is. Okay, here we go. <sighs> okay, there's that four note range right there. And who's gonna fall sado like me? Who's gonna fall sado like me? Cause I ain't got the ability to belt. See, here's the thing about um, Beyonce. Beyonce's a talented person. Beyonce has actual pipes. So whatever you want to say about Beyonce, and I have many things I've said in the past about Beyonce, and I'm not like a huge Queen Bay fan, but that lady can sing. Taylor cannot sing. Taylor cannot dance. Taylor cannot write great lyrics anymore. <laughs> I know. I know. Okay, here's, uh, this may be the worst song on the entire album here, which is, again, this is saying a lot. My boy only breaks his favorite toys. So what happened here? is that she had a concept for a song and then she decided that she didn't actually need to flesh out the concept for a song. She was just going to use this hook as a rationale to write a bunch of nonsensical lyrics. So basically the, the idea here is that he she was his toy and he broke her. Oh, look at me. But we need to do that over the course of, again, three minutes and 23 seconds. Now doesn't sound like a lot of time, but like the water planet in Interstellar, the longer you are on this song, the more time passes. When I started listening to this song, I was 40. By the time I finished listening to this song, I was 82. Here we go. My boy only breaks his favorite toys. So much range. So this, this song, so many of these songs sound like other artists without a chorus. This song is Charlie XCX with no chorus. That's what this song is. Yeah, I see Justin nodding along because he knows this is true. That is right. Okay, if you listen to this next to any Charlie XCX song, she's hijacking the MO of Charlie XCX and then she never gets to the chorus. Why? Because Charlie XCX can sing a little. You know, can't sing at all. Taylor mixed with face. Wait till you get to the chorus again. I want to play the choruses because the thing about a chorus is it should grip you. You should want to sing the chorus of a song. Here we go. Here's the chorus.
Yes, that's that's that was it. That was the chorus. Did you feel it? Did you feel the, the did you feel your heart pumping as we hit that chorus right there? Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? I'm feeling a warm spot. Sorry. Okay, did you hear that four note range? Again. It would be one thing if she used that to her advantage in any way, but it's the same song over and over and over and over. And again, the lyrics are dumb. My boy only breaks his favorite toys. What does he do with his not favorite toys? He doesn't break them? Like, okay. So so he loves you because he broke you is the basic idea there, I guess. Uh, okay. Now, one of the things that we will see as we go along a little bit here is that she has terrible taste in men, apparently. Um, and, and anybody who views her dating history can see this because... Literally everyone for albums is about, like, if you date Taylor Swift, you should know there's at least an 87% chance what did he say? that you will end up being the subject of four songs about you. That is her MO. When we get to song six, which is the only important song on the album, for all the reasons that I will explain, you'll see why she apparently believes this. There is something ideological here, folks. I know you thought I was just going to rip on her for, for, you know, eight hours here. There'll be a lot of that, though. Okay, here, here is it. This is number four called Down Bad, another inspiring anthem to how broken she is and how everyone is mean to her. And I can't believe our love collapsed like a dying star. Also, she, she goes real hard on the F word here. This is her modern song. Right, this, is, this is the one where she proves she's an adult because she says the F word like an adult would, like one of the adults. For a moment, I knew cosmic love. Cosmic love. Everything comes out teenage petulance. if I can have him. This one's unique, it's two notes. You give me a great composer and use a couple notes to create a motif. For example, John Williams in Jaws uses two notes to create a motif, right? When the shark is coming. This ain't a motif. This is the chorus of a pop song. And it has three notes. Three. Three is a magic number. Dot 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 dot. Dot 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 dot. That's the chorus. Okay, it's crap. It's total crap. Also, oh my god, I knew cosmic love. Did you? Was it cosmic? Was it just? It was. It was. It broke the universe. Your love so much that you're crying at the gym. Get over yourself, lady. Jeez, Louise. The self indulgence here, insane. Okay, on to the next one. This one is So Long London. Now, I believe this one is about the, the dude she dated for like six years, right? Joe Alwyn is the name of the person she dated for like six years, and then he didn't marry her. But because, again, our modern society teaches women dumb things, she didn't at like year two go, hey, want to get married? And if not, then I'm off this train, which is the way that it normally should go. So she stuck around for six years, but she's really angry at him. Now, there used to be an old phrase that has fallen out of use because it's considered politically incorrect. No one buys the cow if they can get the milk for free. And let's be real about this. That is the way that men tend to approach dating. That is the reality. In any case, if a man can get away with not marrying you for six years, and there is no pressure for him to marry you for six years, and he's not desperate to have kids and settle down, he ain't going to marry you. Which is why, back to the Queen Bay, if you like it, then he should have put a ring on it. Correct. In any case, So Long London is another one of these kind of, it feels like she smoked a lot of pot before she, before she recorded this. Um, here we go. So Long London, which when this, when this one started, I will say that it sounded like it was at a different tempo. I was like, oh, this will be interesting because it's like 160 BPM. When I first, nope, she's going to sing it at half tempo just to make sure you don't get too excited. Here we go. It's so boring. Stop CPR after all, it's no use. The spirit was gone, we would never come to. And I'm pissed off you let me give you all that youth for free. Okay, so um, again, we're back to three note choruses. So long, na na, da 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 da. Okay, um, apparently I've been informed that my sister from another mister, Brett Cooper, is a is a fan of this particular song and thinks somehow that this conveys excellent messages because it's Taylor Swift whining that she gave too much of her youth to this dude that she dated. Okay, I will tell you why she is wrong. I mean, she's my little sister. We'll pat her on the head. Here's why she's wrong, okay? The reason she's wrong is because she's not pissed at herself for giving her youth away for free. She's pissed at him. Quote, I'm pissed off you let me give you all that youth for free. Why would you not treat yourself better, lady? Why is it his fault 
that you gave all your youth away for free. Shouldn't you have a higher standard for you? Why is it his fault? You could have walked out any time, obviously. So, um, yeah, again, overdramatic, terrible song. We're only five songs deep, folks. We're 25 minutes in, and we are five songs deep. This album is 31 songs. Okay, this one is the most important song in the album. It's called But Daddy, I Love Him. Daddy, chill. This one actually matters. Why? Because this is all about she was a rebel teenage girl. She was a rebel against her parents' terrible religious standards and their evil morality, which is why she ran away with the romantic boy. And then the subsequent 20 years of relationships are all failures. You want to know, like, inception point of crappy dating? This, this song right here. Here's the lyric, okay? I just learned these people only raise you to cage you. This is all about the evil people who go to church on Sundays and they tell you things like, don't run off with a dude who rides a motorcycle and has no job. Don't have sex with that rando and take off to the local motel. That's a bad decision. And you're like, no, man, you're judgmental. Yeah, until you're 34 single and still whining about it. She's been able to monetize that. So like slow clap for her for monetizing her angst. But for the vast majority of people who follow this garbage moral advice, you're gonna end up 34 single without a billion dollars like Taylor Swift. So here we go, when she rips on Sunday school morality because she's running off with the dude who rides a motorcycle and it's been totally great because now she's married and happy, right? Nope, she's 34 and she's angsty. Sarah's and Hannah's in the Sunday best Clutching their pearls, sighing what a mess I just learned these people try They try to save you because they hate you. Christians, they hate you because they're trying to save you, right? That's, that's, her, that's the entire premise of the song is that people who are trying to save you from yourself, from sin, they're bad. They actually hate you. They want you to be unhappy. Like as unhappy as you would be if you ran off with that guy on the motorcycle when you end up 20 years later single and miserable. They're so mean, those people. Can't believe those people. They're terrible. I love this. She says, thinking it can change the beat of my heart when he touches me and counteract the chemistry and undo the destiny. You ain't gonna pray for me. Me and my wild boy and all this wild joy. If all you want is gray for me, then it's just white noise and it's just my choice. Wow. Now, here's the thing. She comes back later in the song, and then she has her fanciful happy ending, right? Her fanciful happy ending is, now I'm dancing in my dress in the sun, and even my daddy just loves him. I'm his lady. And oh my God, you should see their faces. Time doesn't give you some perspective. And no, you can't come to the wedding. I know it's crazy, but he's the one I want. Okay, but here's the thing. That's not how it materializes. It turns out when you run away with the guy in the motorcycle, he very rarely marries you. He very rarely ends up leading you to happiness. You know who can testify to this? Taylor Swift, in all of the... 18 songs on this album where she talks about breaking up with dudes. God, you look like an idiot. Next song, Fresh Out the Slammer. This is a, I'm a bad bitch song. Here we go. Years of labor, ducks and ceilings in the shade of how he was feeling. But it's gonna be all right. I did my time. She's uh, out of that relationship. She's out of the slammer. Wow, she's, she's really independent. Okay, that's boring. Next, Florida. <laughs> Okay, this is with Florence and the Machine, who actually has some talent. So here's one of the only mildly singable songs on the album. I need to forget, so take me to Florida. I feel some regrets, so I'll bury them in Florida. She's gonna bury her. Is she gonna bury her problems in Florida? Okay. Sure, I suppose. Florida. Still not great. Better than, than what she's usually doing. Okay. Guilty as sin. Right. So again, everyone who creates problems in her life is uh, somebody who has told her that sin exists and you shouldn't do stupid things. So there's another one of her. I can't believe they told me not to not to do this. I can't believe it's not a sin. How could it be a sin if I like doing it? I don't know. How could it be a sin if you like strangling puppies? I mean, there's like all sorts of stuff that people like doing. It's weird and terrible. How could it be a sin if I decide that I wish to eat every donut in sight until I die of cardiovascular disease? It turns out lots of things that people like to do is not exactly like the best for you. And just to make clear that what she's talking about here is how much she really despises religion because she's a, she, she really despises religion a lot. And that means all of her problems are because of the religious people who she hasn't listened to for 20 years. If long suffering propriety is what they want from me. These lyrics suck by the way. They don't know how you've haunted me so stunningly. You can't haunt someone stunningly unless they stun you by coming out of the closet and hitting you with a stun gun. <laughs> Haunting you stunningly. <laughs> I choose you and me religiously. Uh -uh. 
Wow. So your religion is whatever your random boyfriend's name is this time of the year. Yep. So put that one in the same in the same category as um, but daddy, I love him. Here we go. Who's afraid of little old me? This one, I believe, uh, is about how she is. Um, you guessed it. Right. This is uh, so many people attacking her. It's so rough being Taylor Swift. Man, people are so mean to her on the Internet as she sleeps out her giant pile of money like Scrooge McDuck. OK, here we go. Thank you, Autotune, for that. Well, you, should be. you should be so afraid of her. I want to snarl and show you just how disturbed this has made me. You wouldn't last an hour in the asylum where they raised me. You wouldn't last an hour in the asylum where they raised her. You're locked in here with me. So all you kids can sneak into my house with all the cobwebs. I'm always drunk on my own tears. Isn't that what they all said? That I'll sue you if you step on my lawn. That I'm fearsome, I'm wretched, I'm wrong. Put narcotics in all my songs. And that's why you're still singing along. So I leap from the gallows and I levitate down your street. Crash the party like a record scratch as I scream. Man, I swear, her metaphors are more mixed than the sound on this particular album. <laughs> Who's afraid of little old me? You should be. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> yes, we're all, we're all terrified, Taylor. I can fix him. No, really, I can. Is the next one. But your good Lord doesn't need to lift a finger. I can fix him. No, really, I can. That's the chorus. That's not the bridge. That's the chorus. There's no chorus. L.M. Malel. That's the next one. It's about how she broke up with a guy and now she's upset about it. Wow. I, I couldn't have predicted that. She thought that she had cosmic love. Oh, no, it was her other song. No, this time she thought it was legendary. And she thought it was all time, but it was, it was, it was momentary. Here is the chorus. If you know it in one glimpse, it's legendary. You and I go from one. Da, 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 da. You noticing a pattern with all of these three note choruses? Oh. oh, she's so boring. She's endlessly boring. Here's the thing. How do you even find her interesting? She was like made in the laboratory to be boring. Okay, here's another one. It's called, I can do it with a broken heart. What do you think it's about, guys? What do you think? Any guesses? Oh, you nailed it. She's a bad bitch. She's a real tough kid. She can handle it, guys. Until she writes her next song about how she's heartbroken and she'll, she's shattered and crying at the gym. Again, I, I, I confuse all the songs because uh, they sound the same. But uh, here is the chorus to this song. Let's count the notes. Da, 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 Wow. Inspiring stuff. I cry a lot, but I'm productive. It's an art. You know you're good when you can do it even with a broken heart. You know, there's some people who have overcome hardships in their lives. There's some people, you know, lived through the Holocaust or went to war and came back. There's some people who lost a child. There's some people who've, you know, defeated cancer. There's some people who've lost a spouse or, or a loved one. And then there's Taylor, who's done it with a broken heart. Now, the smallest man who ever lived, fans are speculating that it's about Joe Alwyn, but she apparently is addressing Maddie Healy. You didn't up. Oh my God, it's so bad, guys. Here it is. Any measure of a man made fun of his penis. Boom, owned. <laughs> oh. Okay. Now, here's another one that people are talking about. It's called The Alchemy. Apparently, it's about Travis Kelsey because she makes a reference to a touchdown. So clever. Wow. Because he plays football. Get it, guys? So when I touch down, call the amateurs and cut them from the team. The God, it's every chorus. Every chorus is three notes. Da, 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 da. It's unbelievable. That was great. Glad we could spend some time on that one. Okay, here she's gonna make a cultural reference. She's sophisticated, guys, because she knows who Clara Bow is. She's got it. And plenty of it, brother. She's got it. Mmm. Wow. So uh, here she is referencing a silent film star. And uh, this is all about how uh, she's sad, but she's, but she's, she's working through it. You know, here it is, Clara Bow. You look are people entertained by this? How? Like, does it seem like I don't go to clubs because I'm an adult. But I have a question. If you did go to clubs, could you dance to this? I don't mean like the the the, the dance where everybody is like unbelievably stoned and kind of waving around. 
I mean, like, actually move your feet dance. Like, no. Everything is done at the slowest tempo. It's like she took a hit of opium before she decided to write this album. All right, sounds bad. The Black Dog. Is it getting any better? No, by the way, we're at track 17, guys. We're at 44 minutes, track 17. So, good news. We're past the halfway mark. Bad news. There are 31 songs. And uh, this one, again, is about how um, she's very sad. She, she's, she's, she moves through the world with the heart broken. Her longings stay unspoken. If only her longings stayed unspoken. If only. But no, we have to hear about all of them all the time. And then here we go. And this is, a, oh my God, she doesn't understand how you don't miss her in the shower. Maybe, okay, tip to women. Virtually all mammals are capable of having sexual relations. The question is, are you interesting enough for a person to want to be in a relationship with you? That is a different thing than how you don't miss, I don't understand how you don't miss me in the shower. Okay, like, come on. Here's the chorus. How you don't miss me in the shower And remember how my rain-soaked body was shaking Do you hate me? Yeah, this one's called I'm Gonna Get You Back. Guess what it's about, guys? She's a bad bitch. I knew it. I'm gonna get you back. It's all one word. No punctuation. Like E.E. E. Cummings. Get you back, whether I'm gonna curse you out Or take you back to my house I haven't decided yet, but I'm gonna get you back. Okay, um, so she did this song better when it was called Blank Space, where she says she doesn't know whether it's gonna be forever or you're gonna go down in flames. But I've got a blank space, baby, and I'm gonna write your name, right? Same thing, right, Sammy Zach Lyric? Or she doesn't know. Is she gonna ignore you or is she gonna set your house on fire? What the F? Who knows? But she's gonna get you back, guys. Okay, now the albatross, which strangely does not refer to her, who has become the albatross of my life, because we are now at song 19. <laughs> I know, I'm just gonna keep announcing it so that you get more and more depressed along with me here. Spread my wings like a parachute. I'm the albatross. I swept in at the rescue. <sighs> Got nothing. All right, Chloe or Sam or Sophia or Marcus. All names that, that she has uh, picked out of a hat, presumably. This is a story of a rocky relationship, I'm told, by Genius.com. I'm just going to make a song about cows. I go moo. Filled with hurt and self-examination. Throughout the song, Swift shares a dream in which an ex-partner comes to her in a dream as a hologram from the future. The eponymous names are those of the child being carried by the hologram of a new relationship. This beckons Swift to reflect upon the past relationship, longing for honesty and closure amid the heartache, while questioning if she'll ever be able to move on from it. Okay, well, sounds awesome. I'm just wondering why don't you stop singing about it and move on and get married and have kids. Hands in the hair of somebody in darkness named Chloe or Sam or Sophia or Marcus and I. Well, because darkness and Marcus. I know. As the decade would play us for fools and you saw my bones out with somebody new. Saw her bones out? Wow, I got... I got extremely violent, extremely quickly. Anyway, who seemed like you would have, and you just watched it happen. If you want to break my cold, cold heart, just say, I loved you the way that you were. If you want to tear my world apart, just say you've always wondered. Mm. Nope, next. Okay, this one, titled, How Did It End? But It Will Never End. You're trapped here in hell with me and Halo Swift. It's never gonna end. This one is called, How Did It End? It's another relationship post-mortem. You couldn't have called it, could you? You couldn't have. Because it was going to last forever, guys. But it, it but it, well, here we go. We hereby conduct this post-mortem. He was a hothouse flower to my outdoorsman. The f***? A hothouse flower to my outdoorsman? Our maladies were such we could not cure them. And so a touch that was my birthright became foreign. Are you f***ing dumb? This is terrible writing in every possible way. It's possible for it to be terrible. What does a hothouse flower have to do to, with outdoorsmen? That's not even... What? What? He was a hothouse flower to my outdoors. That's fine. Our maladies were so There's a piano, guys. We could not cure Ooh. Them. That, it's meaningful and, and it has feelings because there's a piano. But the piano only plays single notes on the bottom hand and it plays arpeggios on the top hand. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
that's how you know it's meaningful. Wow. So how did it end? Don't know. Don't care. Moving on. So high school. Why are we going back to high school? We're going back in time now. This thing is going so slowly that we have moved back in time. She's so in love. No one's ever been more in love. She's so in love. It's just like high school. That's what, by the way, if your standard of so in love is high school, you're doing love wrong. Another piece of life advice. If your standard is how you felt when you were 15 years old with a girl. McLovin! <laughs> what the f***? You're doing it wrong. And you should probably figure out something new in your life that makes your relationships better. This particular chorus is amazing because she leaves off consonants. In a blink of a crinkling, uh, not crinkling, crinkling eye. I'm sinking. It's like Barack Obama when he drops into his weird voice. In a blink of a crinkling eye. I'm slinking. All right, he drops all his G's. Here I go. I'm watching American Pie with you on a Saturday night. She feels so high school. Yes, she does. But you're 34. Stop feeling high school. Over yourself. This is track 23. I hate it here, which I do. Here is Taylor Swift on history. Here we go. I'd say the 1830s, but without all the races and getting married. Just to make sure that she uh, she covers her bases there. Good. Seems like it was never even fun back then. Nostalgia's a mind trick. If I'd been there, I'd hate it. It was freezing in the palace. I hate it here, so I go to lunar valleys in my mind. When they found a better planet, only the gentle survived. I dreamed about it in the dark. The night I felt like I might die. Uh, uh, um. You're not. You're not that important. Also, by the way, you are a conversation killer. Yeah, I think that if somebody, like if we were in high school and said, like, I wish I could live in the 1830s, I think we can all assume you mean without the slavery. Are you sure about that? Can we, like, make that the unspoken assumption? I feel like everybody's against the slavery. But you had to put it in the song to make sure you don't, don't think she's a racist. That's good. The next one is called Thank You, Amy. Okay, this one is supposed to be a jab at Kim Kardashian. How do we know? Because she cleverly encoded it, like the Enigma codes from World War II. It took Alan Turing to figure this one out. Here it is. Thank you, Amy. It's about Kim Kardashian. You know, because it says, thank, capital K, U, A, I, M, E, E. K, I, do you get it? Do you get it? Do you get it? She hit it right there for all to see, but you didn't get it until I just told you. For, for those who aren't unaware of the Taylor Swift, Kim Kardashian fight, here is the very short story of the Taylor Swift, Kim Kardashian fight. Taylor Swift, one best album, a year when Kanye thought that, that it should have been won by Beyonce. They share the best music video or something. I, I'm really happy for you. I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. And she was mad. She was big mad. And then apparently he wrote a lyric in a follow-up song in which he suggested he was gonna have sex with Taylor Swift as an intelligent person like Kanye West would. He, uh, he did a song about how he and Taylor Swift were going to have sex and then put it in a music video. And she was offended. Ooh, offended. Ooh. And then it turns out that she probably approved the line and then she said she didn't approve the line. Then Kim Kardashian released a tape that included her approving the song. But then she said it was a different version of the song she approved. Are you still awake at this point? Are, are you fascinated by this retelling of the great rivalries of history? Right? I mean, this is like Napoleon and the Duke of Wellington. I mean, it's just like, uh, um, like great rivalries of history. It's like Hitler and Churchill, Kim Kardashian and Taylor Swift. Here she is making bailed references to Kim Kardashian. All that time you were throwing punches, I was building something. And then, um, F you, Amy. Okay, here we go. All that time you were throwing punches, I was building something. And I can't forgive the way you made me feel. Oh my God. This is about a lady whose husband put you in a song. It wasn't a fair fight or a clean kill each time Amy stomped across my grave. And then she wrote the headlines in the local paper, laughing at each baby step I take. Wow. I mean, again, I got to say the, the, the problems of the rich and billionaire. That is so, so rough. Has anyone ever told this lady, like she needs some cognitive behavioral therapy. Maybe your feelings are unjustified. Maybe you're overdramatic. Maybe this is all obnoxious. Hey, next, I look in people's windows, which normally would be a commission of a crime. But um, when Taylor Swift writes it in a song, it's not. She says she uh, she's jealous of everyone. Here we go. I look in people's windows, chance fixed by rose golden glows. They have their friends over to check. Honestly, Jack Ann's not that paid for this album. I guess good for him for clearing the check. 
Next, the prophecy. Again, she, she's back to, to playing biblical, biblical lyrics. I got cursed like Eve got bitten. Oh, was a punishment. Pat her around when I get home. I guess a lesser woman would have lost hope. She said, just wants someone who wants her company. Oh, that ain't me, lady, because you is boring. Here we go. I've been on my knees, change the prophecy. If she's putting the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Prophecy. prophecy. Uh. Okay. Guys, if you thought this wasn't epic enough, she's going to make some references. We'll wait for it. To some Greek mythology. Yes. You were waiting for it. And here it comes. Yes. Okay, she's going to make a reference to Cassandra. This one is also about Kim Kardashian, apparently. You know, she was the first person to warn that Kim Kardashian might be a problem. They killed Cassandra first because she feared the worst and tried to tell the town. So they filled my cell with snakes, I regret to say. Do you believe me now? Well, do I believe her now? I don't know. She is just like Cassandra. Remember that time she called the stock market crash in 2008? That was just like Cassandra. Amazing. As opposed to saying the most obvious thing in the entire world, which is that Kim Kardashian is totally a dysfunctional human being. All right, here we go. And tried to tell it sound. Here's what she didn't break out in Miley Cyrus it, right? Nope. She's gonna go right back to that home note. Do you believe me? That was the chorus. I can't get over this. I cannot get over it. The entire album does not have one chorus, not one. That's all the musical public asks of you is one all I ask of. That's, that's all anyone wants is a chorus. Just one in two hours of torture. Okay, moving on. The next one is called Peter. Oh Guys, I know you think we're almost done. Um, I mean, we're getting there. We're getting there. There's hope on the horizon. By the way, how long this has been? That's only half the runtime of her album. Half the runtime of her album. And it's supposed to have Peter Pan. Well, I mean, her, her range of references is breathtaking. Breathtaking. Here you go. This is about Peter Pan, about how you said you're going to come grow up and come find me, but you didn't. You didn't find her, and so she's still lonely in her private jet. You said you were going to come grow up. Here we go. Thought it was just goodbye. It's the same song over and over and over you and said over you were until you die. What did, what did he say about growing up and finding it? Maybe she should repeat it 83 times. I don't know, maybe. Then we'll, then we'll get it. Okay. It was a metaphor, guys, because, like, you said that you were going to come find her, but you're like Peter Pan, but not like Peter Pan, but, aw. <laughs> <laughs> the will to live has been robbed from me here. Okay, we're on 29. Almost there, guys. We're, we're, making, we're making the complete trek through this, through this double album. I have to admit, the first time I looked it up on Apple Music so I could torture myself with it, uh, I saw that it only had 15 tracks, and I was like, nope, that's the wrong one. It's the double album. Okay, this one is called The Bolter. Uh, this was a 2 a.m. surprise. Let's see, it says... The bolter has many meanings, one of them being told from a woman's perspective, most knowingly being Swift herself. Well, who else's perspective would it be? Behind her back, her best mates laughed, and they nicknamed her the bolter. Okay, so sure, I'm dating every dude in sight, but that doesn't make me a bolter, and people being so mean to me. Here we go. She was leaving. It felt like breathing. All her f***ing lives flashed before. She couldn't come up with another two-word. That two syllable word there. She had to use the F word because she's an adult. She's adulting. She came, fell through the ice, then came out alive. She be, she bolts to stay alive. Okay, this one is called Robin. So apparently, it might be the baby name for other celebrities. Woo! Blake Lively and Ryan, Ryan, and Ryan Reynolds or something. Okay, this is an inspiring song for the children. Can we get that? Let's get the chorus. Is it going to be like Katy Perry's Roar? It begins way too go, Tiger. Higher and higher, wilder and lighter for you. Oh. Way to go, tiger. So inspiring. It's like roar, but if Katy Perry had fallen, smashed her head on a stoop somewhere. Do you do, do, you, do your children feel inspired by this? this? Is an inspirational song for children. Okay. Long may you roar at your dinosaurs. You're just a ruler, covered in mud. You look ridiculous and you have no idea. Uh hmm. we're near it. It's the this is it, guys. Not the penultimate. That's the second to last. That, the last one here is penultimate. People use the word wrong all the time. Okay? This is the ultimate. This is the last song. We've done it. We've traveled across the distance from the Siberian gulags to freedom. We're almost there. All that is left 
is a bonus track. If those 30 songs were not enough for you, 31's gonna blow your mind. Here we go. It's called The Manuscript. And it's about how she is looking back over her life and realizing that she was damaged as a ute. And now she's looking back at the manuscript of her life and she realizes that's what made her her. Oh, wow. A message that has never before been conveyed in song, in art. I'm sorry, I'm choking up a little bit here, guys. Well, we'll just we'll listen to the, the final verse, verse three. The only thing that's left is the manuscript because we may as well finish this one out together. It's at the very, very end. One last souvenir from my trip to your shores. Now and then I reread the manuscript. Got some high upper register. I like her feelings. Aww. That was her past. Wow, that was that was super nostalgic. Well, the thing is that um, I began my life manuscript about the time we started playing that album. It's been eighty years. Hope you enjoyed that, because no one else did. If you really enjoyed that, you can go listen to another 50 minutes of that on her album. Her album is two hours long. Well, folks, I got to say, in short, not a fan. Eh. I'm going to go like two out of 10. It was bad. I, did, I, I, will, I will admit it, it was bad. Did not enjoy. Would not listen to again. But. As one of the few reviewers will actually put his name on a negative review, just right in my obit about Taylor Swift, Ben Shapiro shreds Taylor Swift for an hour and 15 minutes. 